So, thank you so much for your uh, kind attention. Uh, let us begin our session. Namaste. I am Randhir Kumar Gautam on behalf of the School of Humanities and Social Science. I welcome you. It's a great pleasure and indeed an honor to have available with us our distinguished speaker, Professor Lekha Chakravarti from uh, NIPEP, Delhi. We are also joined by Dr. Anima Chaudhary, economist from Hyderabad, Professor S. K. Tandan Saha, and Dr. Firoz Khan. We are also, I would like to extend welcome to our Chief Patron, Justice Dr. Meena Vigomber, former Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court, Dr. Akhar Goli, President of Rajasthan, and all the respected participants, viewers, listeners. Welcome to this career counseling session on the topic Exploring Careers in uh, Let me first give a kind of introduction to our honorable speaker. First is Dr. Lekha Chakravarti. She is a professor at NIPFT, National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. She is also affiliated at Research Associate with the Levy Economics Institute of Bad College, International Institute of Public She is a economist in institutionalizing gender budget in India with Chief Economist Advisor, Minister Finance, Government of India in 2004. Her area of interest are microeconomics, financial human development, and gender budgeting. So first, I would like to invite Dr. Lekha Chakravarti, ma'am. Ma'am, over to you. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. You can start your presentation, ma'am. You are audible. Okay, I'm online. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, can I, can I deliver? Because it was unclear. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, you can yeah. deliver your talk. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I thought that uh, Dr. Anima will be going before me because I have seen her speech and she's an entrepreneur and she's in the education sector, but I need to talk because Anima, okay, definitely I'll do that. Uh, Thanks so much for having me. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible, ma'am. Okay, it's very clear. Yes, it's very clear. Okay, okay, thank you. And, uh, it's lovely talking to the students about the career options in economics. Uh, you know, if I remember my past, you know, there were two options right in front of me after doing my PhD or, 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 or on the, in the final days of my PhD, like to join, uh, you know, the proper academic space or to join a policy space. So the, that's such a kind of decision. Students are in, the, you know, the moment you think about a career in economics. So I opted for, you know, policy research. I joined a think tank with the Ministry of Finance so that's the way I began. But some of my friends, you know, they opted part of, you know, joining a university. And in the process, you know, that journey, some of you know, you can, and you do a lot of books and get publications in the international journals to mentor your students, and that that's an interesting field. But in the policy space, uh, you know, two options. One is, during the higher study, you become the doctor or take the doctorate and join an institute of impact and try to contribute to the policy debate and the policy space in your country. So you're, you can contribute 
the person making process of your country. Then, you know, you can opt for the civil service exam and in the economic service exam. So there, you know, uh, some of you may take the economic service and um, get to the north block and you can taking fiscal policy making, that is the public finance policy making, the budget policy making, and you can continue three like that. So these are broad two options if you are choosing to be with a grown country. Now, if you want to, you know, try little ahead, and if you want to fly high, go to other countries, join international organizations, and contribute to the policy space internationally, then, you know, the options are you can join IMF, World Bank, you and different entities. So there, you know, you have to have ability, more than academics, you have to have the ability to work with an international team. And it is, you know, satisfying experience able to make it. So when you work with an international team and when you, you proceed with one global goal is like sustainable development, SDG, that we have pushed the debate. Economic growth is not everything. We have to be sustainable development globally. So you're working with a global team in UN, in, uh, you know, agencies like IMF, World Bank. So these are the different options. And in if one thing while, while studying what you have to focus is, you have to be listen rigorous in the quantitative things, mathematical modeling, econometric modeling. So you need to fight on the rigor. Like, you know, what is happening, the empirical evidence you want to support with the modeling model. So that focus is on the quantitative agencies, you know. Uh, that is people mattered initiative. Ultimately, you are doing service to the people. So that ability in you to connect to the people, you know, work in the field. So those abilities, those personal abilities of a child, you know, of a student, that is equally relevant. And maybe, uh, you know, your professor Renvi has already started a forum in your department or in your institution to have a global debate and to form the peer group. So that's the way you can build the confidence among yourself to, you know, to start the process. These are the quick thoughts that came to me. Then now I will listen to Edima and I will talk to you to so answering your questions and we can fine tune our thinking. Over to you, Renvi. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. You are, uh, you, you, you have just broadly uh, talked about the almost uh, very significant dimension of the you know, economics career, be it policy and be it academics. So um, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Anima uh, Chaudhary. So before uh, her talk, let me introduce her. Uh, Dr. Anima Chaudhary, she uh, holds a doctorate degree in financial economics and MPhil in development economics from University of Hyderabad. She is also a certified career counselor she is an entrepreneur, uh, recognized under the CPA, India, and ACCPH UK. She is currently pursuing a master in sustainability and development from University of Michigan. Besides this, uh, she has vast experience in the education field and has been dealing with child nutrition, inequality, and economic growth from the past 15 years. She has been a developmental economist uh, with considerable research interest and publication in nutrition, uh, education system, and child development. So she has a vast experience um, also from the field of psychology and counseling psychology as well. So now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Anima Chaudhary. Yeah, am I audible, Randit? Yes, yes, ma'am, you are audible. I think I'm visible also. Yes, you are visible. I'm not very used to the Zoom platform, so that's why. Thank uh, uh, right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Randir, for the invitation. And I think it's an absolute honor to be sharing the platform with Professor Lekha. 
and knowing her beliefs and the body of the work that she has been involved in and somewhere it motivates us and propels us as a female participant of the labor market to view the economy from that perspective also which has been untouched and untapped also so gender budgeting and all that which we have never talked about that much in detail in the economy because we somehow believe in the trickle down theory so good evening everyone present here uh, i think we have all gathered here to discuss about and i'll keep it open uh, rather than lecturing you i have lit, done little bit of research obviously because uh, when you get into one area that is the area of research you obviously uh, kind of deviate from the other arenas of the uh, subject so but before that i think uh, i won't be wrong if i state and we i think we don't need a bulky theory to support that uh, economics and finance are the areas which are recession proof and i think no one would refute that so those of you who have decided uh, to be on the path of economics who have chosen economics as the subject i think you have taken the best decision of your life now what we have seen in our country uh, mainly after demonetization and the pandemic so this policy changes and the turn of events uh, by pandemic this all have a very deleterious impact on the labor market now there has been a burgeoning rate in the informalization of the labor market also now our society is very globalized it's obviously the competition has increased many fold at the same time the comp uh, competition has provided multitude of opportunities to the people but what is happening at the same point of time that the labor market the mechanism of the labor market is very dynamic it very dynamic and the complexity of the labor market is changing on every day basis so the labor market works best and the theoretical framework would support that that when uh, sorry someone okay so it's labor yeah so labor market i believe that it would work the best when you have a kind of institutional or the social arrangement where you could provide the adjustment uh, capacity or the flexibility to the entities who are solely responsible for creating the employment in the economy so that flexibility is somewhere it is might be missing in our economy as we compare with the developed countries and uh, with the developing and the emerging countries like ours we would be able to see that uh, it's just not about the stabilization of the labor market as opposed to the developed countries where they are just focusing the policies are revamped and modified every every time to actually create opportunities for the employment and but when you come to the developing country the policies uh, policies are mainly concentrated to stabilize and to formalize the labor market so that is one area which the economy is struggling and grappling with but having said that we cannot also deny the fact uh, of late there has been a increase uh, there has been a spike in the career opportunities for those people who are involved in economics uh, for like economic analyst economic researchers or economic consultant now these professionals are mainly expected to understand the dynamics of the labor market the complexity and the complications of the labor market and then they would be able to produce the data produce the interpretation and the results very effectively now there are very several banking uh, national international bank banking sector also who are looking and who are hiring for uh, who are hiring the economist so that keeping that in mind and if you go back and read little about the international labor organization report also the report which was published by the international labor organization that has uh, said that there has been an uh, increase in the youth population over the last two decades but at the same time there has been a plunge in the participation rate now this is a kind of a very uh, obviously this is definitely not a sending a very positive signal this is a very alarming situation for the economy because this also talks about uh, what we call neet the neet is an acronym for those people who are not on employment uh, education and training and the uh, the uh, 
distressing fact and the disturbing fact about all this is that uh, the majority of the labor force is the female part female workforce so having said that let's move to talk about and i think uh, we have our theories also to support if you date back to the classical economics and where jb said jb say one of the pioneers of the classical economics said that uh, supply creates its own demand so i think we need to somewhere but first our foundation in such a way that you would be able to create the market for yourself you would have your choices now as a economics or as a student of economics there are certain characteristics there are certain traits which you require to imbibe one the first one the theoretical understanding and that is somehow lacking in uh, what i believe uh, you might differ on that uh, you you can have obviously debate it's open for uh, debate also that what i believe uh, in india in the education sector and mainly in economics we don't teach our students the classical political economic thought we don't give them the history of economic thought which is very rich and vast as compared to the science subjects so that the theoretical understanding is very important it's very imperative for anyone who is starting the career in economics you should know your theories which have obviously led to maybe uh, you start from a, from the beginning from adam smith the wealth of nation going to uh, keynes or uh, poor economics by avijit banerji so you should know what is happening at right? the theoretical understanding is very integral for economics plus you should have a very strong mathematical background the numerical knowledge of this profession is quite demanding i understand because sooner or later even if you have a theoretical background in economics but what we need to understand sooner or later you need that mathematical understanding so many students who come from commerce uh, planning to pursue in economics so commerce oriented subject like accountancy would also uh, would also help you to gain the knowledge of those mathematical concept and all that but it is in this principle it is <laughs> need to build up a career <laughs> but having said that uh, it's not necessary that if you are not very good in maths you cannot be an economist they run parallel but uh, they coincide at some point you need to integrate maths and economics at some point but definitely that own deter the motivation if you have for economics but having the knowledge of economics is definitely important for our subject the another thing is very important that you should be obviously updated abreast with all the current affairs happening around you and you should be able to present that information in a very lucid and a comprehensible way to the people to the layman or to the people who don't understand the mechanism of economy and why so if i give an example for you to understand few years back when the government planned uh, that the corpus which has been pulled out for the npa scheme would be reinvested in the annuity market there was a huge retaliation there was a huge retaliation by general paper and could never be implemented now what happened the general public they don't understand and we know and we know that why they don't understand because you have adam smith theory invisible hand self interest dri driving the economy so everyone is obviously driven and their choices are being determined by the self interest so they didn't understand and what happened a chunk of money going out of the economy will obviously have a negative impact on the fiscal deficit so we need to draw that correlation we should not obviously stand against each and every policy i remember hearing uh, professor kausik basu also uh, on one occasion and he told uh, he had mentioned about something that he, when he was working as a uh, chief economic advisor for the indian government he came up with a policy where it was said that the bribe giver and the bribe taker should be aligned like they should be punished equally there should be an equal punishment for both the bribe giver and the bribe taker now what he suggested somewhere if you can change the whole pattern and you can actually uh, just put the fines and penalize only the bribe taker so their interests don't align their interests don't intersect you will be able to obviously control this kind of problems in the economy 
so those kind of so you need to know that that talks about the analytical bent of the mind you should have a research mind you should be able to see from every perspective every facet of the economy i have a very simple example we go to the shop uh, the shopkeeper doesn't have a change uh, and the shopkeeper hands over that one rupee uh, instead of one rupee coin he hands over the chocolate without realizing we happily grabbed it and uh, without knowing that it might lead to the inflationary impact so small small thing so you should have that analytical mind analytical bent of mind to think about what can happen if i talk about the farms bill it was obviously necessary for the farms bill to be modified how and where the policy makers could obviously be able to tell you better but what happens if you know there's some some problem with the agriculture system there is a some leakages happening uh, there's some leakages happening when you are talking about the minimum support prices and we also know that the people below the poverty line they never get the benefit and somewhere the agriculture system is supporting the oligo oligopoly market or uh, creating the oligarchs in the economy so you should have that kind of mind to understand analyze and evaluate also so thinking logically also helps right so these are the some characteristics which you need to have if you are planning to pursue in economics now coming to the various option various opportunities what you can have in economics first i'll start with academics but obviously as professor lekha also mentioned about that once you complete your ma uh, and you move to either do either doing your mphil or you clear your ugc jrf and net getting a 55% will be uh, uh, fair enough and you will be able to continue with the phd now what you have to find out the choices what you make what you need to understand the areas what you like exactly while talk about myself i started with development economics and the what the, the major reason for uh, me picking up development economics because my professor was a very close alliance of john dries was a belgium economics and i was quite fascinated the way he used to work at the grassroots level and i thought of taking up the financial economics but somewhere i wanted i planned to combine and integrate development and finance also so you need to decide what exactly you want to pursue and that would obviously again demand a lot of research from your side and as we say that there are studies which have established a positive correlation between the degree which you hold and the earnings what you have and that will obviously tell you the income uh, level of the phd scholars also now apart from the academics you also have a choice that after your academics uh, you can go for the indian economic services which are mainly conducted by uh, upsc and now you should fall in the category the age group should be 21 to 30 beyond that so if you are planning so you should plan within that 30 years so that age group is the bracket is 21 to 30 and this people obviously belong to a category then you can and having cleared that as you have seen professor lekha also working you obviously get to work with all the think tanks of the government sector nationally internationally niti aayog uh, the substitute for the planning commission national uh, sample survey organization and all that apart from the academics you also have a option of working with lot of banking sectors also now you have reserve bank of india now reserve bank of india they do hire economics uh, through their own recruiting process they have their own exam pattern but the age group the bracket is 21 to 28 again if you are planning keep in mind that if you are planning to get into get through the recruiting exam of central bank of india you should have that age group you should keep in mind the age group of 21 to 28 or else you also have an option of working in the uh, national council of the applied economic research indian council of social uh, science research or institute of economic growth also now economic graduates either you pursue uh, either you pursue uh, your higher education in economics or you plan to continue with the banking services but you also have an option of working independently and that's what we do that's why i have been doing it right? you have an option of working independently as an economic consultant and there is no age bar for that but yes there are private sectors there are private entities in the market which do offer jobs for the consultant uh, consultancy jobs and all that right then you have the option of becoming an economics 
The role of the economist is very simple. Collect the data, study, analyze the data so that you could provide a very specialized economic advice to the policymakers. Again, if you know about Abhijit Banerjee's work over the decades, what he has done, suppose, for example, I need to suggest the government that the mosquito net, provision of the mosquito net can take care of the health of those people below the poverty line or from the marginalized sections of the society, I should have a very concrete and the solid data to support my study, right? So you collect the data, study, analyze the data, and that's why you will be able to get involved in the policy making. So as in economics, the major role, what you have to do, you have to carry out research, collect large amount of the data, which could cover every aspect of the social policy, ranging from interest rate, taxation, foreign exchange market, health, transportation, and all that. For example, suppose, for example, I give, uh, again, I can give you an example. Suppose we keep talking about the climate change. We have recently been focusing and emphasizing on climate change. Now what happened, uh, the climate, the green factors, we have never considered the green factors. We have never factored in those green factors in the calculation of a national income. Now we know about the self-development goals, but the, uh, World Bank. We know the self-development goal. The first one itself tells you the elimination of the poverty. Or if you go to uh, look into the self-development goal number eight, which talks about uh, the inclusive growth, sustainable development, and provision of the decent workforce. Or self-development goal 10, inequality. And if you put all this together, there is a high positive correlation. And somehow we have obviously not been able to focus on that. So that is the work of the economics. You need to integrate each and every aspect of the economy and you need to understand. It just not trickle down theory. You should not assume that if I take care of one variable, it will go down to the grassroots variable. You need to have a focus on all the other variables in the economy also. So you need to analyze your information and now you have a lot of packages or uh, you have the statistical packages. We started obviously with the simplest package, SPSS. Now you have R and um, EVU start and all that, right? <laughs> so you need to use those statistical packages and the advanced methods in the statistical field so that you could do the forecasting. You could do the statistical estimation. And that's quite important. Looking at the data, looking at the pattern and the history of the data, you should be able to predict the future. Right, it's a kind of a role of a priest. Economics uh, uh, act like a priest in the system, in the, the foundation, the structure of the country. Right, that is our role. We should be able to predict, we should be able to anticipate. It cannot be completely right, but we know there is a fair degree of the probability of this event occurring in the future. Now, these findings are mainly used by various organizations, uh, mainly by the government organizations, uh, local government, central government, consultancy, major companies, banks, financial institutions, and all that, right? So the, there is also a role and a scope for the people who are involved in the economics. Now, if it need to become an economics, uh, you have need to have a two is to one, what we call. So you need to have a degree in economics. So what these people, uh, those organizations who are looking to hire economics, they mainly look uh, for those graduates who have a major in economics, mainly the, uh, the core modules should be in economics, but it could be supported. Uh, by finance, law, management studies, mathematics, modern languages, politics, international economics also. So the two is to one, or you can go ahead with the simple economics on this also, backed by mathematics and statistics, right? So make sure that if you are going ahead with a joint degree, the maximum portion of your course should be in the economics modules only, right? The many uh, organizations, they prefer to have a postgraduate degree or they also hire the PhD scholars also for as an economics. You can have a postgraduate degree, uh, you can have any, like you can have a graduation in any other degree, but you should have a post-graduation in economics. So that is another very important factor which you need to understand. Another very lucrative area which is coming up, which is definitely not, uh, has not grown that much, which has not matured that much in India, the actual analyst. Uh, now, as a uh, career in the actual analyst will suit you if you have a very strong mathematical ability, right? So you should be good at 
problem solving, and you should enjoy the analysis of the data. And that's the beauty of the data, how to handle the data, right? What the data speak, it is our role. As an economist, it is our role to make them speak, right? So you should be good. So if you have the caliber and you should be good uh, with the IT's information and technology also, you should be good with all the spreadsheets. You should be good with all the calculation part. So mathematics, again, plays a very important role. Apart from economics, what say the uh, actual analyst First, you need to have economics, obviously, but apart from economics, uh, organizations, uh, institutions, they, they also hire people who have a degree in the business studies, but it should be a numerate option. And you can have a degree in the business studies, but your model should be a mathematical-based business studies. Apart from that, you can have engineering, physics, statistics, anything. So actual analysis should be able to, you should have a strong ability in maths, the capacity to analyze and solve the data problems and the ability to carry out the statistical analysis, such as scanning, cleansing of the data, right? Interpreting the trains, predicting the future, right? So that should be the role of the actual analyst. Then you have the role of the data analyst. And data, as you know, uh, data is everywhere. Whatever you do nowadays, everywhere there is data. So data analysts are obviously high in demand across all the countries, developing developed countries, across all the institutions, you have a very high demand for the data analyst. Now data analysts are being hired by the finance, uh, finance consultancy firms, then manufacturing firms, pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals firms, government and education sectors also. Now, if you plan to go ahead with the data uh, analysis, you, uh, you can have a wide, uh, wide range of the subject. One, you can obviously have economics. Business information system also helps economics, business information system, computer science, information management, then you have mathematics and statistics. So these are the subjects which you could actually club with economics or along with economics, you can plan of taking all these subjects if you plan to continue or if you plan to become a data analyst. Now, postgraduate degree is obviously important. If you don't plan to do go ahead with the uh, PhD and MPhil, DPhil. So you can go ahead with the postgraduate degree. Now, postgraduate degree in data sciences are becoming more popular nowadays. Everyone, either you do a graduation in any subject, but then you move to the post-graduation in the data sciences. But whatever happens, you should be able to have the knowledge of working on the data. You should know how to handle your data effectively and a very comprehensive way. Now, apart from uh, if you suppose, uh, for example, if you're doing your graduation in economics, you can plan if you have a BSc in economics, that's always better. But if you have a, a graduation in economics, BA or BSc in economics, you can plan for uh, MSc in big data, MSc in the data science and analytics, MSc in the data sciences itself. So these are the courses what you can look for after your graduation. Right, and as said, data analysis, it's, uh, it uh, uh, speaks, uh, like you can uh, see it in the name itself. Data means that you should be able to have the familiarity with the data. You should have the knowledge of the data analysis tools. You should be able to produce, deploy all kinds of statistical, mathematical tools, econometric tools to able to present your data in such a form that it attracts the attention of the non-economics or any lay person who are not obviously well-versed with the subject. So you should equip yourself with that mathematical background. Then you have the financial risk analyst. Now financial risk analyst, uh, the name itself suggests that uh, you should be commercially aware. You should be aware what is happening around in the financial market, stock market, equity market, just not in India, but outside your country. A simple policy of Trump increasing the interest rate on the debt market, how it affects your country. So as a financial risk analyst, you should be aware of the potential threat and the risk to any project or the business or to the economy as a whole. So as a financial analyst, you should uh, be able to work in the credit market operation, uh, then the regulatory market. Now financial analyst, uh, the role of the financial analyst could only be supported by the few courses. What you can choose is in the accountancy, apart from economics, obviously, accountancy, engineering, 
finance, insurance, law, mathematics, risk management, and statistics. So these are the course, courses you should look for if you are planning to become a financial risk consultant. Then you become an investment analyst. There is a lot of scope for the, there's a lot of room for this sector to grow for this area, the investment analyst. You should be able to handle someone's money that lucratively that you can generate profit for that person. So investment analysis should be, be able to adapt in researching and understanding the financial market and be able to communicate this information. You should articulate this information to the others. If I produce the data, uh, suppose, for example, when I spoke about, uh, suppose for the farms law, whether the MSP should be eliminated, should be implemented. We have no idea. Should it lead to the oligarchs, uh, oligopoly market, which has led to the disintegration of the Russian economy? But if we have the data to support, but we should be able to articulate this information to others also. So that is the role. That's another uh, characteristic which you need to consider if you're planning to become a investment uh, planner and all that, right? So investment planning, if you have a uh, degree in economics, that's always better. Apart from that, you can have a degree in accounting. You can have a degree in mathematics and statistics also. Again, there is a ratio of two is to one. You can also decide on two is to one. You can have a degree in economics along with other degrees also. But it's very important because most of the organization look for a very A level or B level degree in for the financial and the risk analyst. And another role which can be decided, which can be taken up by the people who are in the economics are being the statistician. Now, working in the statistician means you are dealing with the data on everyday basis. So you're helping to find out the practical solutions to the problems. You are just not uh, keeping the data, storing the data. Data storage is another thing. You're just not storing the data. You are providing the practical solutions to the problem. So uh, for example, the asset monetization should be done or not for a span of 25 to 30 years, depending on the asset. Is it a feasible solution for the government? But the government has been indebted, government has been borrowing. So you should be able to looking at the data, looking at the history, looking at the rate of the borrowing, the fiscal deficit GDP ratio, you should be able to provide that practical solutions to the problem. So if you're keen on numbers and you're very good and effi uh, efficient with the IT, again, the computers, and you are very good in compiling the information, then you should look for the role of a statistician. Now the statistic job could be well suited in the education, environmental sector, finance, forensics, accounting, forensics also, government sector, health sector, market research, sport, uh, sport industry, and the transportation industry. Apart from economics, again, you can have a, uh, you can think of your course in mathematics, statistics, or geography. These are the areas where you can think of having a degree. Again, if you are going for geography, uh, plan to club this together, right? So that will increase the probability of getting into the labor market. Now, again, for the statistician, you should have a very numerical bent of my numerical ability and the computer literacy are the important parameters. Then you should have a clear understanding of the statistical methods, terms, and the concept, that statistical methodology, the research methodologies. You should be very well versed. You should be equipped with all those necessary terms or necessary understanding of the terms and the concept and the analytical skills written and the oral communication. These are obviously important and these are pertinent to any industry, pertinent to any sector, what you talk about. And as I said, you should be able to produce the data. There should be a gust uh, presentation of the data. Your uh, data should be organized and structured. So government should know that there was a study which was done by one of the researchers in the London School of Economics where they tried to find out after the pandemic in the labor market, the government should provide the direct cash benefits or should they should give the monetary reward or they should provide employment opportunity, create the employment opportunities. And based on the responses of the 800 plus households, what they found out that the people are not looking for the cash benefits. They are not looking for the direct cash benefits and transfers. They're looking for the employment. They're looking for a sustainable livelihood, a permanent employment for them. So you should be able to collect the data to suggest the government 
whether the government should be implementing these policies or not. The I for detainee, you take any uh, branches, economies obviously can branch out. So if you take any branches, you should have the I for details. That's very important. Now there are obviously quite obvious question people ask that uh, whether they, the uh, degree in economics uh, is important or not, it is lucrative or profitable or not. Am I on the right track? Yes, it is definitely a good career. As I uh, said at the beginning itself, and I said no one can refute and we don't need a theory to validate this because we know that economics is a recession proof area. Whatever happens, you have to live in a country and that is determined by the economics. So economics is definitely a good career for all of those who are starting off their career. Now, is economics, uh, uh, BS in economics is important, BA in economics is important. It's very difficult to again disintegrate. It's very difficult to actually draw the line there. You would have different models. You have different subjects to be covered in the BA and the BSA economics, but it definitely, it depends on the prediction on your choices, whether you want to pick up that subject or not, whether you have a flair for the numbers and the quantitative information or not. But most of them, uh, if I say that BA in economics, you'll be studying maybe the microeconomics. If you go for BS in economics, you might have the, uh, applied economics, intermediate microeconomics. So you need to take a, uh, you need to take a call. As I said, maths is definitely, uh, is not a constraint. It is not a block. They run parallel, but you need to understand some point they would coincide. So you need to have that basic knowledge of the maths to continue in economics. Uh, right, so I think I'd stop with that, uh, Dr. Randi. Yes. And if the Thank students you. have Thank any you so much. Doubts, Thank can. you so much for your excellent, precise, systematic <laughs> and organized presentation. And you have almost touched all the dimensions so far as the career opportunity of economics is concerned. And we teach, we teach sociology and uh, particularly nowadays, whole uh, theoretical sociology you know, uh, engages with the question of globalization and world system theory, and therefore, uh, the question of economics, the uh, insights, economics insight has become more relevant because we live in a market dominated society. Therefore, a career as an economist has become more significant with a degree in economics. Uh, so, thank you so much. Uh, uh, now I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Lekha Ma'am, if you can share, uh, you know, her re remaining talk. Ma'am, are you there? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's so lovely to listen to Dr. Rani Mar. You know, as you pointed out, she has covered almost all the, you know, details uh, in what are the options available before the students. And of course, your emphasis on sociology, that reminds me something which is, uh, you know, the multidisciplinary uh, approach of the students. You know, that is a secret of success because it is not like we have to be just economists with without giving emphasis to the other kinds of humanity, you know, like the way you pointed out, sociology or psychology, because there are different fields in which behavioral economics. So it's like opting from other subjects as well. So your emphasis equally economics and other, you know, subjects that is very crucial. And it is, of course, a journey from, you know, theory to the data and your empirics and then policy making. So that's a journey Dr. Drenvir was trying to you know, project. And in this beautiful journey, students themselves will identify where, where they fit in. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, a student may think, okay, it's a lot of mathematics, it's a lot of analysis. No, this is not my inner call. That's fine. 
those students will find themselves comfortable in some other other space so you need not be intimidated if models you know I i'm not comfortable with models i'm not comfortable with the rigor of mathematics that is fine even econometrics that's an art more than max that's what i feel when i run the models because when you get the art of it you will be able to you know come with solutions so don't get intimidated by max or econometric models at all after a point of time you know you will be very very comfortable it's a, it's an initial thing you know you may be feeling that this is not my call and now adding to uh, dr anima because she has done excellent uh, talk just i want to add the economic journalism to it you know the content creation by the students uh, you know we will be uh, able to understand that when we write an uh, international journal paper the content is we use alpha beta gamma like that's a language we will be using but the moment you are writing a column uh, in a paper like thousand words if uh, suppose dr renvir is asking a student can you prepare a note on this contemporary topic to me so that you know immediately and he may be get, giving you a time that within five hours or three hours you need to report to me so that ability to quickly analyze and to write a piece overnight that is very crucial so this can come to you only if you are you know continuously updating yourself uh, with the what is happening around you so as students you must be reading you know already dr and we have spoken to you or guiding you on this you must be regularly reading the editorials coming in the business standard in the financial express uh, you know in mint uh, in economic times so you should be continuously reading the editorials then you will get a flair that what is the content creation in what way you have to express because international journals require one particular language policy making requires another particular language that is the way uh, you know dr anima was talking like from the methodology from the data what you analyze you need to present it how you present it you know that is very crucial because policy makers the moment you show your international paper policy makers may say no this is not what i want based on this technical research suppose inflation targeting how you will speak to prime minister or finance minister that this is very important for our country inflation targeting is rbi focusing only on price stability you know as a sole criteria of the central bank nothing else matter so how you are going to convince uh, you know your political party or the party in power or the government in power that this is very crucial for your country so there the content the articulation matters so you know you need to switch uh, if you're writing uh, for the uh, you know policy makers what's the kind of language you need to use so that content creation is very important then third you know my final point is on the methodological awareness as dr anima pointed out there could be quantitative methodology and there could be qualitative methodology some students will be super comfortable with the quantitative rigor analysis you know all those things but some students may think no this is not my inner call my inner call is qualitative methodology that's fine because there are many international organizations and national organizations which they do believe in qualitative methodology for instance you know if you join an international uh, you know civil society organization or you know the 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 uh, fields or the organizations which work at the grassroots level or even the uh, MIT lab you must be knowing the poverty action lab you know the nobel laureates uh, as uh, dr arima pointed out our abhijit banerji then duflo uh, you know geeta gopinath has spent uh, his name is iqbal so they all the part of mit action lab so what exactly they are doing qualitative research means you know perspective of poor by poor how do you understand that that is not by running models that is by you are talking to the people on the ground so you go talk to the people and understand the perspective of poor by poor so that compelling stories you record and come back and report that stories may be worth running 100 million or regressions or the model so those stories are equally important so maybe in your mind you need to give emphasis on the qualitative methodology and quantitative so maybe you can call it as a q square approach uh, to study economics so in this journey of from the theory that understanding 
to the data and creating empirics. And from the inferences, you go to the policy making in that journey. Methodology is very important. And whichever methodology you are comfortable, stick on to that. You don't have to worry about it because aptitude matters. What is your inner call? You find out and you, find, you will find a space in this world. So don't worry at all if models doesn't come. Or some people, you know, mathematics, they enjoy like anything. They don't understand, okay, I have to go to the field and collect and how I put the put forward a story. So if that is not comfortable, that's fine. You know, if there is a space for everyone in this world to, you know, uh, to excel the moment you get passionate about the subject. And passion yes, is the well. important thing, you know, you need to keep in your minds and you dream high and my uh, point about Duflo you know uh, the Apichit Banerjee's example Dr. Anima pointed out on how the mosquito nets can uh, you know the, how it is correlated to the health outcomes it's a simple solution like that another story you know they conducted randomized control experiments uh, a lot of randomized control experiments the Nobel laureates like you know they got the Nobel prize for that you know, they came to the field, uh, you know, they were doing the randomized control experiments and one is like, why immunization is free in our country? Why women are not taking children to the immunization camps? So that's a question. So what they do is that some of the camps they control and some of the camps they may provide lentils. So whether women respond to lentils and they come with the baby to collect lentils and give them vaccination. So these are the questions they asked. And another experiment they conducted is, okay, at the third year of government, uh, you know, uh, like 33 percentage uh, women, they are there in the governance position. So this feminization of governance that is creating some kind of a policy space uh, to incorporate some of the public expenditure decisions that favor women in our country. So the feminization of governance is important. So that was another experiment. So as a part of your studies, maybe Dr. Renvi may be giving you small experiments to go to the field and try it, a small control experiment so that you will be quite aware of you know, that and you can make it big in future by joining you know, MIT Action Lab because it has got a space in our country as well. There are different you know, units of this mighty lab in our country. And you may be the part of that big global team and working on these experiments and uh, you know, come out uh, with you know, solutions. So these are the different options and um, that's it. And over to you students, uh, you know, when I listen to your queries, then I will be able to you know, understand your requirements and reflect better. Thanks, uh, Dr. Envir. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, madam. And you have... Uh that's the very significant aspect of that is the some of the very non-economical dimension of uh, uh, issue uh, or the ideas which need to be you know incorporated in the mainstream economics and particularly with the work of uh, Amrit Sen and uh, you know we have uh, essentialized this value. So now I would like to invite dear and respected uh, participant to kindly share uh, you know his or her thought. So first I would like to invite Kim Alimara Sol. Kim Alimara Sol, am I audible? Kindly unmute yourself. So she is taking some time. So I would like to invite Dr. Firoz Khan. Thank you, sir. Uh... It's really an honor to be the part of this uh, uh, wonderful session where uh, we have uh, uh, Professor Lekha and Dr. Anima. So it's really wonderful to listen to them. I just like to say that uh, whenever we are talking about economics, we are talking about a core subject. And if we are taking a core subject, it means we are uh, implying it in an interdisciplinary manner, like uh, cultural economics, gender economics, socioeconomics. So it can be fit to every area. And uh, that's it from my end. If anyone has any query or want to know anything, uh, I'll be there. Thank you. Yes. I would like to invite, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Firoz Khan. Uh, Professor Tanan Saha, Professor Suresh Kumar Tanan Saha, would you like to share your thought as a discussion? Please unmute yourself, sir. Professor S.K. Tanan, sir. 
so he is taking some time uh, so dear students any others okay so let me see any uh, question on the facebook because we are also yes one question is uh, on uh, experimental uh, economics you know how what are the significance of experimental economics one well, student is asking so i think he is uh, you know uh, trying to uh, understand the work of uh, our novel laureate so dr anima would you like yes. to respond yeah i would you like to uh, ask professor lekha so or else i'll go ahead go ahead anima go ahead okay thank you so much ma'am yeah. i think experimental economics and opposite of the behavioral economics somewhere so experimental economics if you understand it all uh, it's a branch of economics which basically deals with the uh, behavioral pattern the human behavior but in a control se setting right so it uh, data collected uh, in the experiments they are used to uh, estimate the size uh, the validity of the economic theories and you can also uh validate the market mechanism also and right? so experimental economics in a way you need to understand so the human character so suppose for example as i said uh the hum uh, the behavioral pattern is quite important when we talk about the behavioral pattern placebo effect Mm. we would have heard about the placebo effect in the behavioral economics and we know that how it affects the choices those are done uh, made by the individual in the market right or else suppose for example if i look at the financial market how the behavioral pattern the risk averse the risk lover or the risk neutral how they make the choices but the experimental economics uh, tells you that you are doing this in a confined laboratory setting and you need to find out the size of it the theories of uh, of all the theories existing theories and you need to work on to find out define the market mechanism yes dr randi i think yes, i would yes. have thank answered you. that thank you so much thank you so much and we are also running out of the time uh, so i have uh, dr devendra are you there perhaps we are also uh, you know having program of uh, pre uh, teachers day celebration so i think uh, he is busy in that so thank you so much and uh, very excellent presentation by dr lekha madam and i have read so many uh, articles of her uh, i think uh, I, i can take one a question from one participant in the chat box i can see how can economics improve the quality of life uh during the pandemic i think this is a very uh, very relevant and important question so uh, professor lekha chakravarti madam would you like to respond well, thank you so much for that question yes. you know i worked on a major study inequality. the asia pacific countries <laughs> how they responded to the pandemic uh, you know through the fiscal and monetary policies i can share with your student uh, that paper you know basically what you have done is you know his question is very relevant that how it can improve the quality of people this this question is so crucial because in mo most countries how they have designed the pandemic packages focusing on the economic growth and we think that the economic recovery will naturally translate to but that doesn't happen like that you know you have to have you know many components in the fiscal stimulus package in terms of social security measures for people the government acting as an employer of last resort because here everything else fails so government have to support as anima pointed out you know many research proved that it is not the basic income that matters it's a participation income that matters people you know participate in the economy and earn an income but right now little bit of cash transfers may be okay to improve the quality of life because now you know everything is closed down we are slowly doing an unlocking process so there to avoid the livelihood crisis may be a targeted cash transfer may be quite relevant and of course to improve the people's life fiscal space is important you know so how what is a fiscal space available to you so based on that only you can provide you know programs for poor so there are many kinds of discussion whether you have to go to privatization procedures 
have to do monetization of deficit, not assets, the deficit monetization, like a little bit of printing money and financing your program rather than saying so cruel that we don't have money. We will go for an austerity measure, which will have further problem that affects the quality of well-being. So there are many tools in which you can address these issues, you know, and that question which is very relevant and he has taken the paradigm away from economic growth. His question was how we can improve the quality of people. So this is what, you know, finance minister should be asking. And what, when you identify the gaps in the pandemic package, this is exactly what is coming out. It is quite significant that what are the kinds of measurements we need for food security, social infrastructure in education, especially digital divide and health of food vaccination, then third point is on the, so, of course, the social infrastructure, social security, food security, and as I mentioned, employer of last resort policy. So these four things are quite crucial to improve the quality of people. And thanks for that brilliant question. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, with this word. Uh, I, I, I Salik. The, okay, thank you so one. much. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for the coming and all the respected participants who kindly, you know, attended the session. And uh, personally, I am very grateful. I'm very thankful, Dr. Alima Chakravarti and uh, Dr. Lekha Chakravarti, madam. Thank you so much.